Good day, welcome everyone to our class. As you can see on the board, we are dealing with core physics. Now, the reason why we are doing this is to make sure that everybody out there is also able to assess what we are doing as far as physics is concerned. So, on our topic today, we are treating electrical energy. Electrical energy. Please kindly hold on, be with us so that we try and do everything that is related to electrical energy as far as our YC, our NOVEC, and our terminal exams is concerned. Okay, now I want to start off with what we call electrostatics. Now, electrostatics is coming from two different ways. We have statics and then we have electro. Where electro is representing electricity and then statics. If we say something is static, it means that it is stationary. So electrostatics is dealing with the study of the behavior of ions or charges at rest. The study of the behavior of ions or charges at rest. Now what are our ions and what are our charges? Basically we have two types of charges. We have the positive charge and then we have what? The negative charge. So we have positive charge and then we have negative charge. So we are going to talk about the study of the behavior of the positive and then the negative charges at rest. Okay, now if you come down here, you realize that I have my positive and a negative charge. So these are the two charges that we have. And in all cases, there is going to be a force of either attraction or repulsion between these two charges. And these forces are what we call the electrostatic force, which is sometimes also called the Columbic force. We are not going to go deeply into this because that aspect is our elective aspect of physics. So we know that electrostatics, we are talking about the behavior of charges at rest. Then there are two types of charges, that is the positive charge and then the negative charge. Good. Now the next thing here, we have the laws of electrostatics. Based on our stationary charges, we have two laws. We have the first law, we are saying that like poles repel and then unlike poles attract. If we say like poles, then it means that, a quick example, I have positive and positive, I have negative and negative. These are the same or similar charges, and therefore they are like charges and like poles. And unlike poles are positive and negative. These are unlike poles, okay? Now, once you have a positive and a positive set of charges, there is not going to be an attraction, but there is going to be a repulsion. So if there is any force, there's going to be force in the opposite direction. So it's the same with this in the opposite direction. So we say that unlike poles, what? Light poles repel. But when unlike poles attract, okay? So when we have unlike poles, like positive and then negative, these are different, like opposite sex, like male and female. So if this is the male and then this is the female, then there is going to be an attraction. But if you have a male, male, there's going to be repulsion. Female, female, there's going to be what? Repulsion. Okay, so this is what is leading us to the type of charges and then the laws of what electrostatics. Good. Now, what is charging? What is charging? I want to talk briefly about charging. Now, charging is a method by which a body will receive either a positive charge or a negative charge. So, a process by which a body receives either a positive or a negative charge is what we call charging. And there are so many processes. Okay. We can do that by rubbing. We can do that by electrical method. We can do that by conduction. Okay. We can do that by induction. Okay. There are several types of charging an object or a body. But here, let us pay strict attention to charging a body by rubbing. Okay. There is friction. Also, if you want to charge a body by rubbing, this is what happens. A quick example. If I want to use my palm as an example you see that as i rub my palm against each other in opposite directions there is a generation of what we call heat okay and charging is electrons or protons that are moving away but this time here we're saying that electrostatics so they are stationary but if you want to apply a charge to a body then we want charges to move from one body to the other okay so once there is rubbing then there is enough heat generation so that the charges that are there, either the positive or the negative charges, will gain enough energy so that they can be able to move. Okay, so we're saying that there is friction between the materials. That is the first thing. And then once there is friction, there is the generation of heat so that one 
acquires a positive charge and the other acquires what? A negative charge. So if this body has both negative and positive, and this body is also there, okay, and you rub this against this, you realize that when there is enough energy, the electrons here are going to move to the side so that this body becomes positive and this body becomes what? Negative. So there is friction between the materials and then two. One acquires a positive charge and the other body acquires what? A negative charge. So this is what happens when you rub two bodies against each other. Examples are rubbing a comb on your hand, rubbing a balloon against a wooden material. This is one simple practical that I would like you to demonstrate. If you have dry hair, okay, if you have dry hair, what you want to have to do is to try and get a comb and pass the comb through your hair or comb your hair for a while. Then after that, get a small piece of paper, a small piece of paper and try and use the comb to attract the paper. You realize that the paper will just attach itself to the comb, meaning that the comb has a charge and that is how come it is being able to attract the paper. Okay, good. And then the next thing that I want to talk about is a charged body. A charged body is a body that has, or that is having an electrical charge, either positive or negative. So once a body has a charge, either positive charge or a negative charge, then we call that body a charged body. Okay, then also we have what we call uses of charged bodies or uses of charges. What is so important with electrostatic charge or charges that are stationary? First, it helps us in paint spraying. Second, it helps us in photocopy machines. And then the third, it helps us in dust precipitation. Okay, so these are the few uses of electrostatics or the charged materials or charged bodies that we can talk about. Let us quickly move away from here and talk about electrics. Okay, so next we move to what we call current electricity. Now, initially we were talking about static electricity. And, you know, the main purpose of electricity, as we all know, is to provide enough current for us to be able to use in our homes to power our electrical gadgets, okay? So that is the main purpose of current electricity or electricity. But you realize that the static electricity cannot provide enough flow of current so even if you apply static electricity in devices, you realize that there will be minute or very small amounts of charges that are going to move about. And therefore, we cannot have better electricity with static electricity, okay? So this leads us to what we call current electricity. So we're just going to talk about things that can provide us with current electricity. The example is the cells or the dry cells. We can talk about a generator and then we can also talk about what we call the solar cell. Now, what is a cell? A cell is a device that converts chemical energy to electrical energy by producing electric charges. A quick example is a dry cell. So if you take the dry cell, you realize that the dry cell consists of chemical energy in it. And this chemical energy are providing us with electrical charges. So we have a conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy by the cell, okay? So that is the first one. The next one is a generator. Now, a generator is a machine or a device that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy, okay? So we have generators. Most of us have generators in our homes, okay? So generators are leading us to other power plants that are helping us to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. And the next one is solar. Anytime you hear solar, then you are hearing or we are talking about the sun. Okay, so solar is also a device which turns the sun's radiant energy into electrical energy. And these are all sources of energy or sources of electricity that can provide us with constant flow of what current, constant flow of current, so that we can use. Now, let us move on to what we call an electric current. An electric current. Now, what is an electric current? If you want to talk about electric current, then we can say that an electric current is, is electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges through an electric conductor per unit time. So we can say that electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges. The rate of flow of electric charges. 
to a conductor per unit time. And then this time around, we can say that our time is what? Second. So it is the rate of flow of electric charges through a conductor per unit time or per unit second. Okay. And the SI unit is the ampere. The SI unit is the ampere, which is in bracket A. So if I write 5 ampere, then everybody knows that we are writing what's current I. Okay. Now let me just bring a quick diagram here. If I want to draw an electrical circuit, let's say I have this representing a resistor. This is representing a bulb here. And then I have a battery here. Okay. Now this battery, as we have talked about already, converts what the chemical energy to electrical energy. So we can have this is positive and this is negative. So once you have charges flowing through this, okay, then it means that you have current also flowing in the system, okay. That's why we are saying electric current is the rate of flow of electric charges through a conductor per unit second, and the SI unit is what ampere, okay. Now, talking about current, we have two types of current. We have two types of current. The first type is the direct current. We have the direct current, and then we have the alternating current. We have the direct current, and then we have alternating current. Let's just then briefly talk about the two types of current. Okay, so our first one is the direct current. I'm still going to use an electrical circuit to represent this. Let's say this is a cell. Okay, now let me just connect it to a resistor and then a bulb over here. Okay, good. Now this is positive and then this is negative. Okay, I'm just going to use, let me just take away this and then let me just write DC. That is direct current in the box here. Good. Now for direct current, what is happening is that once one side is positive and then the other side is negative and a quick example is the cell so a cell you have a cell here with one side positive and the other side was negative so current is going to move in only one direction which is the positive direction so that if current moves here then it flows through the circuit in that way okay so direct current is the type of current That moves in only one direction. That moves in only one what? Direction. Okay. So if you draw an electric circuit diagram, or if you want to draw a graph of current in ampere against time in seconds, then we can say that for direct current, the current is moving in only one direction, and therefore the movement is what? constant this way that is what we can have as far as direct current is concerned so current in ampere against time you are going to have something like this good the next type of current that i want to talk about is the alternating current that is the ac current okay the alternating current now let's define it alternating current is the current or is a current let me make it a current that changes repeatedly and continuously. That changes what repeatedly and what continuously when flowing in a circuit. Okay, there's a type of current that changes repeatedly and continuously when flowing in what a circuit okay now if we say repeatedly and continuously then we can also say it moved to and what through or we can say back and forth or backwards and what forward a quick example in a circuit diagram if i have a circuit diagram and i have ac connected in the circuit diagram then one time this is positive and then this is negative so it has two halves the first half current will flow in this direction. And then when current flows in this direction through the circuit and gets to this point again, then it changes. So you are going to have a second half where this one becomes negative and this one becomes positive. 
and then current flows in the opposite direction. That is why we are saying it's a cut of current that changes repeatedly and continuously when flowing in what a circuit. So in one half, current is moving in this direction, and then the next one it changes and then moves in what the opposite was direction. So a graph of current in ampere against time in seconds for an AC is represented by a curve this way. So that this becomes the positive aspect and then this becomes the negative aspect. So one half is up and then the second half is down, the next half this way. So it changes repeatedly and continuously in an AC circuit. Okay, this is what direct current and alternating current is all about. Let us move on to the next thing. Okay, beautiful people, let's continue with our class. We have differences, a quick differences between a DC and an AC current, okay? Now, the first DC, we know that current flows in only one direction, whereas in AC, car current flows back and forth. For a DC, there is the production where it produces magnetic field with constant polarity. So if we talk about polarity, then we are talking about the positive and negative charges. And I've already talked about the fact that for the DC, this, if this side is positive and this side is negative, it remains constant. But for the AC, in one half, this is positive and this is negative. In the other half, the positive becomes this and then the negative becomes this. That's why we're saying that it produces magnetic field whose polarity changes. Okay. And then this one, it does not induce EMF in the magnetic field. But here, it induces EMF in the magnetic field. Okay. So those are the differences between a DC current and an AC current, if you should meet this in your atom. Then, why is it much easier? Okay, so we're saying that it is easier to generate AC current than the DC current. This is why we are mostly using AC current in our homes and not DC current in our homes, because it is much easier to generate AC current than the DC current. And also, AC can be changed or more easily can be changed more what easily. A quick example, you realize that in our homes, we have electrical appliances, some are mostly, two, we get 240 volts from our apostom bottom and all that, but some devices come where you are using just 120 volts. If you want to use 120 volts, then it means that you need to step the voltage that is coming down to 120, and it can easily be done with an AC, but if you are using a DC, it is very difficult to do it. So these are the two main reasons why we prefer using AC current in our homes as compared to DC current. Then the next thing I want to talk about is electric circuit. Electric circuit. Now, if you want charges or current to flow in a system, then you need energy. Now, this energy are supposed to be able to push or move the electrons in the cell. Okay, but once they move electrons out of the cell, then they have to pass through certain processes before they can move in a circuit or in a system. Okay, so first, I have my battery here. This symbol is representing my battery or cell. This is representing my key or switch. Then I have this one, which is called the variable resistor. I have this one, which is called the variable resistor. Some Times it is also called the real stat. So I have my real stat or variable resistor. This is a bulb, okay? And then this is called a voltmeter. And then this is called an ammeter, okay? Now the wires that are joining one component to another component, we call them the connecting wires. So these are all the lines that are drawn from one component to another are connecting wires. So in this particular circuit diagram, you see that I have one connecting wire from here to here. I have another connecting wire from here to here. I have another from here to here. So if I'm counting, I have one, I have two, I have three, I have four to the key. Then I have five here. Then I have six. Then I also have what, seven. So in this electrical circuit alone, I have seven connecting wires. So any line that is drawn in an electrical circuit that connects a component to another component is called an or a connecting wire. Good. And then a circuit can be either open or closed.
closed. As you can see from this diagram again, at this set, you realize that there is a space here. Now, once there is a space here, it means that current cannot flow totally within the circuit. This kind of circuit, which has not, the key has not been switched on, or which is open, this way is what we call an open circuit. So for an open circuit, it's a type of circuit in which current is not flowing in the circuit. And therefore, you cannot measure current or you cannot measure what voltage in a circuit. You can only measure and current can only flow or charges can only flow through the circuit when the circuit is closed. So in most closed circuits, the key goes away and then it becomes a straight line this way. Okay, so if not, and you have a key here, and the question tells you that it's an open circuit, then it means that there is no current or charge flowing through the circuit. The other thing that I want you to take note of in this diagram is this voltmeter and the ammeter. Okay. Now, the voltmeter is always connected in parallel. It is always connected in parallel to a load in an electronic circuit, whereas the ammeter is connected in series. With a circuit. As we move on, or as you join us, we will talk about what we mean when we say parallel connection and what we mean when we say series word connection. So we'll talk about that as we move on. Then the next thing that I want to make mention of is which way does current flow in a circuit? Which way does current flow in a circuit? Okay, so I have a very simple diagram on the board to represent or to help us know which way current is flowing. This is still our ball. This is still our key. Now, if the key is closed, what happens is that this cell or battery, this cell or battery, so when you have a combination of cells, then you are forming what we call a battery, okay? So this cell or battery, here, this is the positive, and then this is what? The negative. Are you with me? This is positive and this is negative. Good. Now, what happens is that Positive charges will flow in this direction, and then electrons will flow in this direction. Okay, so current is or current flows in the direction of protons or positive charges. Okay, so this side is the direction in which current flows. So anytime current is flowing. The opposite direction is where you have electrons flowing. So current and electrons, they flow in opposite directions. So the direction, the taller one is a positive and then the shorter one is a negative. So current is always flowing opposite to the flow of what? Electrons in an electronic circuit. So, so once the key is closed, you have current flowing through and then you have the bulb giving us light. Okay? You have the bulb giving us light this way. Good. Now, let me just bring our attention to something. Let's say I have two bulbs, okay? I have two bulbs, and they are connected together this way in a circuit, and I have a key here, okay? Good. Now, once the circuit is closed this way, I have current moving in the circuit. So here, you have current entering this bulb, and this bulb will give us light. And then you have current entering this bulb, and this bulb will also give us what light. The same current that flows through this bulb will flow through these other what bulb also. So for circuit, so this is a series connection where you have current or the same current flowing through the circuit. But if I have the same bulb, but this time around they are connected in parallel. This is a quick diagram to illustrate parallel connection, and I have current flowing. Now, once the current gets here, okay, it divides into two. One current will pass here, and then the other will pass in this direction. So we can say that the total current becomes I1 plus I2, okay? We'll talk about this as we move on more, okay? So anytime current meets a junction, it divides into two or three or whichever direction that the junction has. Okay, but when current is going straight and it does not meet a dash and then it has to go straight. So here the total current I is equal to I1 is the same I1 is equal to I2. So if this is I1 and this is I2, then it's the same. But here when it meets a junction, it has to divide into two or what? Three. Good. Now let's talk about resistance. 
resistors. Now, a resistor, okay, is an electronic device which opposes the flow of current. A resistor is an electronic device which opposes the flow of current in a circuit. Okay, so if I draw a circuit diagram, I'm still going to draw a very simple circuit diagram. This way, I have my bulb here now, and then I have my cell here. Good. Let me just bring a key so that the circuit can either be closed or open. Good. Now, this is representing my resistor. In some cases, the resistor can have a symbol this way also. So, this always is a resistor. Good. Now, the resistor is represented by R, and this resistor either opposes or changes the value of the current that is flowing. So that if current is flowing through the circuit, the resistor, depending on the value of the resistor, either reduces it to a certain amount, okay? So the greater the resistance, the smaller the flow of current in the circuit. As we move on, you will understand that the voltage in a circuit is directly proportional to the resistance, the, to the current I, and therefore V is equal to I multiplying R this way. Okay, this is what we call the Ohm's law, but we'll talk about this again as we move further. Okay, good. Now, here we want to talk about resistors in series. If I connect two resistors in series, let's say I have a series connection of two or more resistors, I have R1 and then R2. If I want to find the total, then RT is going to be equal to R1 plus R2. Okay. A quick example, if I have two ohm resistor connected in series with a three ohm resistor this way, then the re total resistance is going to be equal to two plus three, which is equal to five ohm. Okay, so anytime I have resistors in series, then the total resistance, you are going to add R1 towards R2. The next thing that I would like to talk about is resistors in parallel. Okay, so what I have on the board is resistance in parallel. Okay, now if I want the total resistance, is 1 over R2 is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This is the circuit for resistance in parallel. Okay, so I find the LCM R1, R2. So you have R2 plus R1. So RT becomes equal to R1, R2, all over R2 plus R1. A quick example here. If I have a resistor, let's say 2 ohm in parallel with another resistor of, let's say, 2 ohm, okay? If those two are in parallel, and I'm supposed to find the total or the effective resistance, then it means that RT becomes equal to 2 times 2 all over 2 plus 2, which is 4 over 4, which will give me 1. Ohm. So it is either one ohm this way or one ohm this way. Okay, so this is how you go about working for resistors in parallel. Good. Now let's quickly move on to what we call electrical energy. Now, electrical energy is the ability to do work. Okay, electrical energy is the ability to do work. Here we are coming to derive an equation for energy as far as electricity is concerned, okay? Good. So we have what we call potential difference V, and potential difference is a work done when one coulomb of electrical or electricity moves from one point to another point. Now, you ask what coulomb is. Coulomb is the SI unit for charge. So when one charge of electricity moves from one point to another point, and mathematically, we can say that energy is equal to V, where V is a potential difference, multiplying Q, where Q is a quantity of charge that is moving through the circuit. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circuit diagram to represent what I've just said over here. So, assuming I have, let me bring my bulb here, and then I have my key at the side. Okay, great. Now, if I have current flowing through this, we're saying that the energy E is equal to V multiplying Q, okay? But the Q quantity of charge is also equal to current times time, okay? 
they can say that quantity of charge is equal to current. So the quantity of charge is the current that is flowing through a system with what time. So it implies that our energy P can also be equal to V I multiplying what we call T. Okay, so we can have this relation for the energy of what? The charge that is flowing or for electrical energy that is flowing through what? A system. Okay, then the other thing that I want to talk about is what we call Ohm's law. I'm going back to my the side. So look at Ohm's law. Ohm's law is telling us that the current that is flowing through a conductor is proportional to the potential difference across it, provided its temperature remains what constant. So we, let's derive the equation from Ohm's law. So from Ohm's law, from Ohm's law, we know that V is proportional to I. Okay. So V will be equal to I multiplying what R. Here we know that V is the potential difference of the voltage. I is the current, and then R is the resistance. I'm calling this equation one, and I'm calling this equation two. We can do so many things to this equation over here. So we can imply that from equation one, we can rewrite the energy E to be equal to, I'm going to fix this into the equation one. So it's going to be I R, this one, multiplying I times V. So the energy E can be written as I squared R multiplying what T. So this is another equation for the energy. Let me call this equation three, okay? Now from this equation two, we can also say that I is equal to what? V over what? R, okay? I can also come and fix this into equation one so that I can have E, so implying that E is also equal to, so here I have V, then I have V over R, which is the one that I've just fixed in multiplying t so that my e can also be equal to v squared over r multiplying t this is also another relation for the energy let's